I'd like to welcome you to our devotional study today. I've been spending much time thinking about and praying about where it is that the Lord wanted us to go next. And as I've been praying, God has led me to the book of Hebrews. And uh, now we may not do as uh, completely in-depth a study as I've done in many of the other books, but I do want to take some time to walk through the book of Hebrews to give you an overview, uh, to go deeper where it is the Lord tells me to go deeper and uh, to move along where the Lord tells us to move along. So I do encourage you, uh, go to the book of Hebrews in your Bible. You may want a notebook, maybe even a new notebook, so you can keep your notes in, on Hebrews in that particular notebook. And uh, let me just give you a little bit of background. Really, Hebrews was written to a a uh, the Hebrew professing Christians. Uh, these were people who were very religious people. They knew the Old Testament law. They followed the Old Testament law. But uh, it is entirely possible, and there were a lot of people in that day, and there are a lot of people today who are religious, but that does not mean they are right with God. As a matter of fact, being religious does not even mean necessarily that one has a relationship with God, because salvation is not found through religion, it is found through a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we come into this book, there is a much-needed message that is given to the people of that day, that is also a message that we need to hear today. And really the whole purpose, the whole theme of the book of Hebrews is the superiority of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to find as we move through this book that the writer of Hebrews tells us that Christ is better than anything that you can compare him to. And friends, that was not only true 2,000 years ago when this book was written, but it is just as true today. Jesus Christ is better than anything that this world has to offer. He is better than anything that you can work for or that you can ever seek to attain on this earth. Christ is better. So let's read the first uh, three verses today of um, Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1. It says, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who be in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. So as we come into this, we are reminded um, of the fact that Christ is better than all that went before him and that he is also better than all that has come behind him. And we are going to see that as we study through the book of Hebrews time and time again, that truth is going to come out. And as we come into verses one through three, uh, it reminds us that Christ, the son of God, is better than the prophets. Um, notice in verse one, it says, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past, Unto the fathers by the prophets. As you look at their uh, prophecies, many of them were not complete. You know, they prophesied about things that had not yet been fulfilled. Beyond that, many times they prophesied and they spoke of things even though that, even that they did not really truly understand. But God led them to write about these things. But Christ, on the other hand, is a complete and final revelation of God. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us in the book of Revelation that the, that the uh, revelation, that, that Christ is the spirit of prophecy. So all prophecy is about him. And as you study the book of Revelation, it's not so much, and we we did that not too long ago, it's not so much about things that are happening in the book of Revelation. That's really not the theme of the book of Revelation. It's not about, uh, you know, events and all of that kind of stuff. It is about a person, and that person is Jesus Christ. Every book in the Bible is about him, and it points to him. So he says here that as these prophets wrote, wrote as they spoke that what they said was not complete but in Christ is the complete and final revelation of God now he says that these prophets notice uh, God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets so God through them spoke in sundry times and in diverse manners in other words he's saying he spoke in many different times and in many different ways to people and they prophesied of the coming one, uh, you know, one who was going to come, who would who would bring forgiveness of sin. And it says there in verse one, God who at sundry time and in diverse manner spake in time passed unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son, 
whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. So as you study the Old Testament prophecies, you will find that they prophesy of this coming one, the one who would come to take away the sin of the world. Not just simply atone or cover the sin, but literally would take away that sin. That we would be washed from our sins in his own blood, as it says in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 5, that it is only through the person of the Lord Jesus Christ that forgiveness of sin comes. Matthew one twenty one says, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. John the Baptist, when he saw Jesus coming in John 1, 29, said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Hebrews 9, 22 tells us that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. There is no forgiveness of sin. So these prophets prophesied of one who would come who would be the deliverer, one who would come, who would be the Messiah. And they spoke of this person. And now as Christ came into the world, Christ was the fulfillment of their prophecies. Every prophecy that was made regarding the first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ was fulfilled literally to the letter. Christ fulfilled those prophecies. And every prophecy that has been given regarding his second coming, Christ is going to fulfill them literally to the letter as well, because that is what he does. So he reminds us that these prophets spoke of Christ, spoke of this one who would come, but Christ is better because he is the fulfillment of those prophecies. But beyond that, we know that Christ is better than the prophets because these prophets were mortal man, but Jesus Christ is the Son of God. These prophets were people that lived for a time, and, and they, they proclaimed their message and they died. But Jesus Christ is the Son of God, who has always been in existence and will always be in existence. We're going to see later in this verse that Christ was in existence from the uh, beginning of the world, that he was the one who made the worlds, regardless of what John MacArthur or others may say. Jesus Christ did not come into existence at the manger. He had always been in existence. He is God, and because he is God, he is eternal. Sadly, even many of the modern versions have watered down the truth of the eternal sonship of Jesus Christ have watered down the truth of the eternal Son of God. And friends, I'm here to tell you today, the Bible makes it very clear that Jesus is, that Jesus has always been, and that he will always be. These prophets were mortal men. They lived for a time and then they died. But Jesus Christ is the Son of God who lives forever. In, in Hebrews 1 verses 2, hath in these last days speaking unto us, by his son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, notice this, by whom also he made the worlds. Friends, as we look in this passage, we see that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. When beyond that, we see that because he is the Son of God, that he is heir of all things. Notice in verse 2. It says, Hath in these last days spoken unto, spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir. That is, he is the lawful owner of all things. He is the lawful owner of this world. He is the lawful owner of you and me. He is the lawful owner of all that is in this world. Friends, he is the heir of all things. No prophet could make that claim, but Jesus Christ is superior because he is God and he can make that claim. And then we see also that Christ made the worlds. In order for him to be involved in the creation of the world, he obviously had to be there. He had to exist himself before this world existed. Uh, Hebrews 1, 2, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. Remember John 1, verses 1 through 3, in the beginning was a word, the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So there we see very clearly that Christ made the worlds. We know that that title word in that passage is referring to Jesus Christ, because in John 1, 5, uh, well, John 1, 14, it says, the, world, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. As we conclude today, let me give you one more verse of many more that I could give you, but let me give you one more verse that tells us clearly that Christ made the worlds. Colossians 1 verses 15 through 17. 
who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things and by him all things consist. Christ is better than the prophets because their prophecies were not complete. Christ is the complete and final revelation of God. They prophesied of a coming one. Christ was the fulfillment of their prophecies. These prophets were mortal men, but Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Christ is the heir of all things. No prophet could claim that, and Christ made the worlds. Tomorrow, we'll conclude our study on why Christ is better than the prophets. Have a great day.